In this series for Decarbonize, I've discussed three classes of greenhouse gases other than carbon dioxide, ozone depleting substances like CFCs, nitrous oxide, and methane. I've skipped CO2 because pretty much every video on this channel talks about it. So now I'm going to answer a question that is both very easy and a bit subtle. Is water vapor an important greenhouse gas? To listen to some of the climate deniers, you'd certainly think so. Well, the planet has warmed by about 0.8 degrees Celsius since 1880, but half of this occurred before any significant change to the CO2. This graph shows both the man-made CO2 emissions and global temperature changes from 1850 to 2010. The green line shows an increase in man-made CO2, most of it since 1940, you can see, the black line shows fluctuations in overall temperature. Now notice that the rate of temperature increase from 1860 to 1880, when, when there was relatively little man-made CO2, is about the same mm. as for the most recent period when emissions were about 60 times higher. <laughs> Interesting. Now also note that there were dips in temperature at times when CO2 emissions were still going up. <laughs> So the increase in temperature cannot be entirely due to man-made CO2. No. <laughs> uh, nearly all of the warming effect is actually due to a powerful greenhouse gas called, are you ready for this? Water vapor. Oh, water vapor, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's only about 3.3 .3 degrees of it is from CO2, man-made or otherwise. We're going to talk about greenhouse gases and how they're represented, or more accurately, how they're misrepresented by institutions, the media, organizations that are promoting man-made catastrophic warming. Uh, the main mis misrepresentation we see is they completely ignore the primary greenhouse gas, and that's water vapor. And it's the primary one by far. And they are both right and wrong. By the way, the temperature plot in the first video is wrong. Here's the actual history of global temperatures since 1880. I followed the reference in the video to an amateurish website that had no references or explanation where the data came from. The link is below in the description. First, let's ask a simple question. Is water vapor a greenhouse gas? The answer there is very straightforward, yes. But whether or not it's an important one depends deeply on the context of the question, and that's what we'll cover here. First, let's distinguish the greenhouse effect and climate change. Let's start with the greenhouse effect. This is the blanket the atmosphere throws around the planet. Other than clouds, our atmosphere is transparent to visible light which is the part of the electromagnetic spectrum that our eyes are sensitive to, hence why we call it visible light, and where the sun's emissions peak. When the sunlight strikes the earth, it warms the ground, which re-radiates the energy. I'm not going to get into black body radiation, so just take it for now that the ground radiates in infrared light, which has a longer wavelength than the visible light, just beyond what our eyes can detect. The greenhouse effect happens because some molecules in our atmosphere, the greenhouse gases, absorb infrared radiation, trapping the heat. If not for the greenhouse gases, the temperature on the Earth would be about 20 degrees Celsius cooler. And water vapor is the most important greenhouse gas. According to Schmidt et al. 2020, about half of the warming is from water vapor and a quarter from clouds, which is, of course, just concentrated water vapor. Clouds are complicated because during the day they are cooling by reflecting light into space, but at night they're warming, trapping the heat in. It's surprising how little we know about water vapor compared to CO2. We have great direct data on CO2 from Mauna Loa going back to about 1960 and from ice cores much further back. But that's because CO2, other than warming the planet, is pretty inert. If you emit it in one place, it mixes with the rest of the atmosphere within about a year or so, and within the hemisphere within months. So if you measure CO2 at Mauna Loa, you get a good representation of the northern hemisphere CO2 concentrations. But for water vapor, you don't even get a good representation of the Big Island. The air on top of Mauna Loa is very dry. The air at Kona, a bit damper, and the air at Hilo, even wetter. 
the concentration of water vapor in the atmosphere varies from about 0 to 4%. Anyone who has spent a night in the desert knows the power of water vapor as a greenhouse gas. The temperature in the desert drops much more at night than elsewhere because there isn't water vapor or clouds to prevent the heat from escaping. On the other hand, anyone who has spent a sleepless summer night in a hot, muggy city also knows how powerful a blanket water vapor can be. The biggest difference between water vapor and the other greenhouse gases is how long it stays in the atmosphere. If we suddenly introduced a huge amount of water to the atmosphere, it would be gone as rain or snow within a week. In contrast, CO2 might still be there after a century. Likewise, if we removed all the water vapor from the atmosphere, evaporations from the oceans would replenish it quickly. We have no significant direct impact on the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. But we do have an indirect impact through climate change. The amount of water vapor at any place is complicated. That's why the weather is on the news every day. But one element is the air temperature. Hot air can contain more water than cold air. So as our atmosphere is heated, the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere is increased, which strengthens the greenhouse effect. But it also increases cloud cover. And clouds during the day are cooling, reflecting sunlight back into space, and clouds at night are warming, trapping heat from escaping. Which is to say, the increase in water vapor in the atmosphere is probably the most complicated thing for climate scientists to model. In net, more water vapor is probably warming, but how the feedback works is not well understood. Contrary to the claims of some of the climate deniers, climate scientists don't ignore water vapor in their models. That happens exactly never. But it is true that in discussions with the public, climate communicators, myself included, rarely talk about water vapor. So why is that? The key is to understand the difference between the greenhouse effect and climate change. Climate change is happening because the greenhouse effect is strengthening over time. The reason it's strengthening is because the concentration of very effective greenhouse gases like CO2, methane, nitrous oxide, and ozone-depleting substances has been increasing over the last 150 years, not because of an increase in water vapor. These concentrations have been measured both directly and indirectly, as has the increase in temperature, and it's very straightforward to show that increases in these chemicals will heat the planet. The only question is by how much. And the biggest uncertainty is caused by water vapor. So to answer the question, is water vapor an important greenhouse gas? It depends on the context. If the context is, why is the Earth 20 degrees C warmer than it would be without an atmosphere, then water vapor is definitely important. If the context is what molecules should I focus on for my climate models, the answer is a resounding yes. But if the context is what models are causing the planet to warm, the answer is no, water vapor is not important because its concentration isn't increasing because of human activity, and there's nothing we could do to decrease it even if we wanted to. It's hard to reduce CO2 concentrations, but if we did it, it would stay low as long as we stopped emitting CO2. But water vapor would go back to the same levels almost immediately. So if you're trying to motivate policy, it's reasonable to simplify a complex issue by ignoring water vapor and focusing on carbon dioxide, the primary cause of climate change. If you're teaching a course on atmospheric science, then I'd start with water. So in the context of my videos, no, water vapor is not important because I'm talking about how we address climate change, not teaching a course on climate modeling. Since you made it to the end, you probably learned something, so please like and subscribe. If you want to support this channel financially, you can buy me a coffee. The link is below and right next to me. 
And here's a link to my full series of videos on greenhouse gases other than CO2 in case you missed some. And please share this video with anyone you know whose understanding of atmospheric physics is a bit foggy.